Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Tuning in to the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, DJ Youngs, back again. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Again, I said it because this is a podcast, so you can listen to this anytime, any place, anywhere. So I just want to cover all the salutations. Greetings, everybody. Uh, like I said, I hope everybody had a good weekend. I'm happy to be back for another episode. I'm glad you're back with me to check it out. Uh, a few things happened over the weekend or at the end of the week uh, in regards to a few teams. It's the off season. They're making the right moves to, you know, get their teams prepared for the upcoming season. Salary cap just dropped at the end of last week. Uh, that gave people what they needed to know and in going into this new week where the deadline for, um, Teams having to uh, co- uh, abide by the cap rules, being that it is now 182 million. Uh, a lot of teams being over had to adjust to that, and everybody had to be compliant of that by March 17th, which is two days away. Um, so we'll be hearing about a lot. Of course, I'm sure a lot of things will come out later on uh, before then that I'll have to update you guys on later in the week. Uh, but just to give a quick rundown on what the show is going to look like today, of course, as always, starting off with new news, uh, what's going on, what's heard of, what's the rumors that are going around the league, around the football world. Um, next, I'll be discussing uh, the salary cap room for each team as of uh, the week before the deadline for where they need to be compliant. So this is everything that was um, as of before the weekend started, Friday the 12th, okay? Um, we'll be discussing that. After that, we're going to transfer over to my thoughts on a possible transfer of Dynasty Power. What's going on in New England? Something that, that came out for them this week uh, or last week. Um, and then more information on who I believe the power might be shifting over to being in Kansas City been the powerhouse that they are uh discuss that a little bit more give you my opinions and then uh last we'll finish it off with my early league prediction some things that i have in mind who i believe have the best chance of right now winning the championship winning mvp defensive player of the year things of that nature so you don't want to miss it uh you want to stay tuned and check out everything uh, starting off with my first segment, as I said, um, as always, it's new news, uh, breaking news that came out. Uh, Drew Brees, after 20 years playing in the NFL, 15 for the Saints, officially is retiring. He was drafted by the San Diego Chargers, ended up getting traded to what believed that a lot of people feel like was where he was meant to be, and that is the New Orleans area playing for their football team. Uh, just to give you information on Drew, he did win the Super Bowl, Super Bowl 44. He was the MVP, and they won that game. It was right after uh, the you know catastrophe of the uh, Hurricane Katrina that they saw in New Orleans. So it was definitely a uh, pickup for the city is what they needed. I'm glad he was able to do that for the city. Uh, more on him. He's a two-time NFL Offensive Player of the Year, 13-time Pro Bowl selection, seven-time NFL uh, NFL passing yards leader, five time, and he's the only player with five uh, five thousand yard seasons. 
uh, all-time leader in passing yards, completion, um, highest uh, completion percentage ever, the second most touchdown passes, second most fantasy points. Uh, at one point, he had seven straight years with 33-plus touchdown passes. Uh, there's no other quarterback that has, you know, done more than five. So that's a huge accomplishment. Um, he's definitely a first ballot Hall of Famer. Uh, I love just I love I love the guy. He was definitely you know a great player, someone that was uh, I'm pretty sure most football people were happy to watch every week. We were intrigued, um, and in his gameplay, especially on a team with like that, um, with the dynamic that they have, um, it was. It was bittersweet, you know. We saw the last game. We saw how it went down. Um, you know, him losing Tampa Bay in the playoffs. Uh, not the way that we thought it was technically going to go, especially being that it seemed that New Orleans had Tampa Bay's number all season. They beat them both times in the regular season uh, pretty good. And, I mean, it's Tom Brady and it's the playoffs. So, of course, that's uh, technically a different team, a different battle. But... Uh, it just wasn't pretty, you know. He had his injuries earlier in the season, um, puncturing his lungs with the broken ribs. That's not a good thing, of course. And he, you know, he tried to fight through it. Uh, he definitely even said it in his post that, you know, he fought till his last. And he had a beautiful post where he had his kids lined up, and they they were just saying that, you know, he'd be retiring so he could spend more time with them, which is very honorable. We uh, appreciate it uh, as football fans. I'm pretty sure that the New Orleans Saints. Appreciate him even more. Um, he will be missed. Uh, we will, you know, be sad not to see him going against Brady next year in those battles. Um, but we come, people come, they go. The greats come, they go. Uh, like I said, he's a Hall of Famer, so uh, we'll be seeing him around for all we know. He may be getting involved in the sports continuously uh, in a different way. So I'll keep you updated if more comes out on that. Cam Newton. Cam Newton signed a one-year deal worth somewhere around $14 million, they say, uh, with the Patriots. So, back to New England. Um, they, uh, I, I'm going to talk about it more in um, a later segment when I talk about transfer dynasty. But it's just that was interesting. Um, didn't see that coming. Uh, you'll hear from me later on if I thought that was uh, the right decision or not. Uh, also, with the Patriots, they're trading their offensive tackle, Marcus Cannon, to the Texans. Um, there's talks about getting some uh, later trades in there as well. Um, I mean, later draft picks in, in the trade as well. Uh, they just have not released that continuously yet uh, for the full uh, information of it. Also, Tom Brady signed an extension with Tampa Bay um, in four years. It, the The contract says, you know, that it. Uh, it is for four years um, for this extension that voids the one year one year extensions. Um, the deal try the deal ties Tom Brady um, to till twenty twenty two to that season. Uh, the move saves the Buccaneers nineteen million against the salary cap this year. It was another effort for you know Tom Brady to do what he do best, and that is cut money and um, where money comes in for himself, so that you know he can keep the team together. Uh, help out other guys. He's one of the people that understand that um, the money don't grow on trees. They have caps. They have to be able to pay guys if you want to keep them on the team and be able to do what you did this season, which being that clearly the 11-11, you know, the 22 people that start on offense, defense, plus, you know, of course, uh, a little bit more rotation-wise, uh, they were the ones that were the best in the league. They were able to get it done uh, despite mistakes or, any, or injuries or anything like that. The people that he played with this season were the best in the nation to win the Super Bowl. So, of course, being that the salary cap went down um, and they have to pay a couple people because their contracts were due, he did what he needed to do in order to help out the team and keep those guys to keep Tampa Bay a pretty strong favorite going into next year. But, again, I'll give my bold predictions uh, on what I think later on in the show. All right? Uh, also, just note that um, <laughs> this this being that he signs through the 2022 season, now make him put him at 45, and now make him the oldest starting QB in NFL history. Uh, so, I mean... As much as everyone wants to say he's wise, people want to say he's fell off a cliff. 
Uh, we clearly saw that he could still get it done, and he, he, we don't know when he's going to stop. It's almost kind of scary. Uh, you really don't want to picture him being 50 and throwing a football, but shoot, at the pace he's going, that might be possible. Um, I'm not sure uh, exactly what goes on in his household. Last time I checked, his wife wanted him to stop a long time ago. He said only a couple more years. It seemed like it was going a little bit further than that. Not sure if she gave up or if he don't care anymore, but um, hopefully uh, nothing bad happens there. Uh, Wish him the best. Um, Going to Chicago. So the Bears agreed um, on terms of three-year, $11.5 million deal with the DN Mario Edwards. You know, he had four sacks on the season that he came in. I believe he didn't play all 16. He played played 15 games with them. However, Edwards will miss the first two games of the 2021 uh, regular season after uh, he got suspended for violating NFL performance enhancement drug policy. Okay, so he got in some trouble, so he'll be out. But there's that. Also, with Chicago, the Bears are planning to allow Mitchell Trubisky to leave. uh, And, you know, they got some things to address in that QB position. They got Foles. on board, but I mean, I think that rumor has it that they'll be trying to make some runs in free agency or a trade. Which one of the biggest rumors is that quote they said they'll be trying to make a big swing for Russ. I'm not sure exactly what a big swing looks like, um, especially with what Chicago has. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe I'll even you know do some research in there and. Add that into some information for another episode if we see, especially if it works out. But I still, I mean, Russ apparently has interest in Chicago. It was one of the teams he named uh, that he would go to. But uh, I believe it's just because of the favoritism that they lean toward their offense. Uh, I believe, you know, of course, they're getting paid way more on their offense, things of that nature. Uh, but I don't know if it's the right place for him. I don't know if it's going to be the right bodies. I don't know if it's def. I definitely don't know if it's the right coaching staff. But um, I guess we'll see. Uh, also, you know, um, administrative wise, uh, they will be restructuring some contracts uh, involving Khalil Mack, A. Jackson, and some more uh, to save them about twenty three million on their cap space. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Of course, you know how. I mentioned last episode, uh, the cap space changed, why it changed, uh, you know, what it stands for. And I uh, mentioned that a lot of teams are going to have to make some big adjustments, as we know. Right. So um, that's also why later in the show, I'll, I mean, in the next segment, I'll discuss what the cap room looks like for each team. OK, so listen to that. Then you'll probably get a better perspective on what these teams are doing. All right. The Texans, uh, they traded linebacker Benedrick. Uh, ben Ardrick, Ben Ardrick, yeah, Ben Ardrick McKinney, who's a, a Pro Bowl linebacker to the Dolphins for Shaq Lawson. Um, so that's pretty much a one for one trade. Uh, the deal, the deal also will include a swap of uh, late round picks. But you know, of course, we're more interested on these linebacker changes. You know, why this one for that one? Uh, both are good players. Uh, both are solid and healthy. So maybe it's just. Uh, a personal matter who knows um still no update on what's going on with Deshaun Desha- Watson I haven't heard anything from him uh, not saying that he's gonna call me but just saying like you know there's nothing in the news no uh subliminal tweets or Instagram posts I'm pretty sure he's just kind of enjoying himself uh in the off season right now while um his people handle the business they need to with the Texan office um, they Texans still happen to believe that everything is good that he's a Texan gonna be a Texan uh, how much are they not telling us? I'm not sure. But um, as much as I would like to see him go be great because I think he's an amazing quarterback, I do kind of want him to stay there only because I think the division the division is going to be very, very interesting. Uh, <laughs> that that division itself b- before the, the, the draft is – already kind of interesting but once that draft happened and trevor lawrence get to the jags you know like i said we'll it'd be deshaun trevor lawrence uh and then you got carson wentz who just got over there and then um oh what was the other person that i'm forgetting 
One second. I know. I don't know why I'm. Oh my goodness. Come on, work with me here. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah. Carson Wentz, Trevor Lawrence. Oh, yeah. Um, Tannehill for the uh, Tennessee Titans. I always forget about the Tennessee Titans and the AFC South. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to stay there selfishly for my own reasons. Okay. Don't judge me. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, Green Bay Packers decided to keep running back Aaron Jones with a four year deal for $48 million. That's big. I think he had a great season with them. I'm happy that they are keeping him. I'm glad they are paying him. Uh, he was the fifth round pick for the Packers out of UTEP in 2017. Uh, ranked fourth in the NFL this season with uh, over 1,100 yards, rushing yards. And he that's even with him missing two games with the calf injuries. Okay, uh, He did make his first Pro Bowl, becoming the lowest, lowest draft pick that the Packers have had to do so, um, which is dope um it was jones second straight year of a thousand yards rushing he rushed for a thousand over a thousand yards and left the nfl with 19 touchdowns in 2019 um this including the playoffs that season he scored 23 times the most uh the most for a season in team history okay so clearly i they i guess they understood the staple that he was uh for the organization and i'm glad they put some respect on his name and paid him uh, Jones is only 26, so he's uh, only t- there's only two other players in NFL history to post 3,000 plus yards rushing and 35 plus rushing yards with any average of five plus yards per carry in the you know in f- in the first four seasons of their career. Uh, that other person is Jim Brown. All right, so that's that's what we're looking at here is a kid that can be ca- compared to Jim Brown, uh, the legend. Uh, again, good move for them. I'm glad they made that choice. And didn't go to the free agency market. Uh, probably talk about it a little bit more on what I thought they were going to do. Or suggested what they would have done. Uh, if they didn't do this, I'll discuss that a little bit more in a later segment on when I'm talking about the salary cap. So, Because, you know, that is taking a small hit. I think they put him, uh, they leaned his deal heavier for next year, of course. Not this year. He'll be on the small end of tapping that cap this year all right next up i have the kansas city chiefs who released their former number one overall pick eric fisher uh and their starting right tackle mitchell schwartz uh two of the best o-linemen if not their two best o-linemen which made me very surprised i mean despite uh fisher um he did miss the Super Bowl after an Achilles injury, um, so he wasn't there for that. Um, as well as Schwartz missed the last three months of the season with you know his uh, his injury as well. So you know when it comes for comes to two guys, two important guys um, having big injuries and costing a pretty penny, I guess you can say that you know you're not that surprised. Um, History on them. Fisher was selected by the Chiefs with the first round overall pick in 2013 draft. Okay, and then he, you know, went on for two Pro Bowls. Uh, you know, even though he struggled in the beginning of his career, um, but you know, he got better in recent years. Shores joined the Chiefs in 2016 as a free agent after four years with the uh, Cleveland Browns. He was All Pro each season from 2017 to 2019, and he had durable. And he and he had been durable until uh, just this past season when he got injured and had to have surgery. He started 70 consecutive games for Kansas City. Swartz has had uh, a streak of 7,894 consecutive offensive snaps to begin his career before briefly being you know knocked out mid-season with that injury in 2019. He started 134 consecutive games before leaving a week at a week six game. Uh, against the Bills with that injury. So I'm not sure what's next for those guys. I wish them the best. I hate to see it go like this, but you'll hear me speak more on that uh, in a later segment as I talk about the, what I believe to be the transfer of dynasties. All right. So stay tuned for that. Uh, one more thing about one more thing I got in the news about um, Kansas City is that they are planning to or in talks to restructure 
Pat Mahomes contract. Okay. Um, they expect to convert $21.7 million of his roster bonus to a signing bonus in the coming days, uh, which will save the Chiefs about $17 million against their salary cap. Um, it was just in July, uh, last July, the two you know sides, the Mahomes and the organization, agreed on a 10-year contract extension that tied Mahomes up with the team until 2031. A very long time from now, but... We know why they did that, clearly. Uh, league source, you know, uh, definitely will talk to Adam Scheffler of ESPN and, you know, let him know that the deal was going to be uh, about a, worth about $450 million over the 10-year span, uh, possibly reaching, you know, expectations of over $500 million. So half a billion dollars, crazy deal, right? Uh, the extension includes a $140 million injury guarantee and uh, with no trade clause. Okay, Um Uh, what they did was the Chiefs picked up Mahomes' fifth-year option for the 2021 season in April, putting him under contract for the next two seasons. Uh, he, Mahomes had a year; he had uh, two years and 27.6 million left on the deal, which is the 2.8 million for 2020 that rolled over and the 24.8 million for this season. A uh, 10-year ex- extension puts him under contract with the Chiefs for the next 12 years after they uh, fixed everything up. Okay, uh, which he earned it. He earned the money. He earned the time. The uh, everything about this deal. Again, uh, diving deeper into that whole situation and what it looks like to be a Kansas City Chief. Um, in a later segment, when I discussed what I believe to be a transfer of dynasties. Okay, uh, that's majority in the of the big news that are that's going on right now in the league. Uh, more to come soon. Who knows? Something may come breaking while we're sitting here recording now. But that's what I have now. Um, like I said, the next segment will be me speaking on every salary cap for every team. Uh, then we'll go to transfer of the dynasties, Patriots, and the Chiefs. And then I'm going to give some early league predictions, okay? So we're going to take a quick break and then come right back, all right? Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. As reported last episode, uh, the salary cap for this year coming up for the season, uh, the 2021 season, uh, is $182.5 million, with 8% decrease from the $198.2 million cap in 2020. Uh, and it, of course, like I said, the cap has risen every year since 2011. Um, but, you know, due to the pandemic, uh, things happened. I uh, just want to kind of give you guys an idea of what your team uh your favorite team cap space might look like because of course this affects who the team is going to have to keep release go pick up uh go find go draft uh because you have to be able to play these players right so uh starting from the bottom uh the hardest team that was possibly hit by this decrease uh were the new Orleans saints uh they have minus 38 million on cap space, okay. Uh, they're spending 108 on their offense and 90 on their defense. 
Okay, and um, of course we know they have a lot of pieces. Um, earlier I didn't get to tell you guys this here since I started the show, but um, we all know that Drew Brees is in question of retiring. Uh, we don't know where his real plans are, but right after you know he lost in the playoffs to Tampa Bay, and everybody pretty much was like, okay, now we're just going to wait on him to make his official statement. The next thing I heard I heard about Drew Brees was him restructuring his contract so that he'll take the veterans minimum of a one million so that I, they could have more space and have more money, which clearly they needed. But at the same time, it's kind of like, well, why are you doing that? Is that your way of saying you're coming back? Uh, not sure, but I keep the only reports still hearing is people still saying uh, he's expected to retire. So um, with him leaving, I, is that going to save the money or not? Um he is carrying apparently uh, more than twenty-two million in dead money. Well, the the franchise is uh, so, but they got a good team, right? So who is up that they may have to get rid of to save them? Uh, I know they're supposed to. They released Emmanuel Sanders, cornerback Janoris Jenkins, the punter Thomas Morstead, and Josh Hill, but clearly more will have to be done. Um, I hear talks that Kawan Alexander is next up, but the people that they have on their team, you know, that make their offense dynamic, fortunately, I do not believe they'll have to lose. Okay. So that, that's the good news. Um, as well as, you know, certain key players on the defense, who knows, uh, but they're going to, what they're going to have to do is they're definitely going to have to restructure deals. They're going to have to move some people around, uh, possibly make some trades, worst case scenario. Uh, before, above them with a minus $31 million cap space, uh, is the Los Angeles Rams. Uh, they're spending 96 on offense, 87 on defense. Um, and they are a team as well that have certain things. They just made the big trade to get Matthew Stafford. This off season, so clearly they are moving all in. Um, they didn't go and look for some young guy or in the draft or anything to, to build around. They clearly have the mindset that no, we're now. Uh, they made it to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Uh, did not win for unfortunately. So they're looking for the opportunity to get back there, knowing that what they have going is capable of getting there, getting them there. Um, above them, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles minus. Uh, 28 million, spending 129 on offense and 102 million on defense. Okay, uh, they have already released Deshaun Jackson, which for whatever reason it feels like they release Deshaun Jackson every year. Uh, who knows? Uh, but they also restructured several veterans' contracts, including uh, Darius Slay and uh, Jason Kelsey, which are important people. Um, but what's important is I think that their you know superstar tight end Zach Ertz is going to be leaving. I think that's something that they're going to have to do. Uh, remember, I did say that most of these deals that they made with teams are heavier on the back end, which is what affects these salary caps in the long run. Uh, so he they might have to come off Zach Ertz to help out with that a bit. Um, so sorry, Eagles fans, but I do think that a lot of people expected them to get. Um, uh, some type of receiver or some type of tight end Kyle Pitts in the draft. So that might not be too bad. We will see. Um, <clears throat> so minus 22 million Atlanta Falcons uh, spending 107 on offense, 74 million on defense. Uh, Atlanta definitely had a tough year this year, um, mostly on defense. They've been struggling uh, defense-wise to keep other teams out of the end zone. Uh, and that's what, what would happen. They they had known to find whatever way they could to lose these games. Uh, you know, that was a running joke during the season that, you know, even when they win, they lose because they weren't supposed to, <laughs> things of that nature. Um, but, you like I said, uh this is something that they're going to have to look at. We all don't know what's supposed to be happening with Matt Ryan, but uh, Matt Ryan and Julio Jones have the two highest cap numbers in this 2021. So, and clearly Julio Jones might be, you know, that guy, but I don't know if Matt Ryan's going to take them back. Um, we're not sure if he's going to be able to get it done. Uh, again, 
everyone do have to be compliant by March 17th. Um, so, you know, once you guys hear this, once this is <laughs> out, it'll be the 15th. So two days away until a lot of things happen. So my next episode is probably going to be more full of what all happened. Uh, Chicago Bears with minus 17 million offensive 78 million defensive spending 118 million which we can possibly know uh while it's pretty heavy on that end with big players like Khalil Mack and more uh but they already open space by uh, deciding to bring back veteran you know cornerbacks uh Buster Sp- Buster Scrine and a right tackle Bobby Massive for you know a decreased position price uh they do need a flexible quarterback which I think is why they may get someone in the draft to help with that. Next up, uh, minus nine million is the Green Bay Packers. So we're getting people that you know we're getting closer to easy solutions. E- you know, it's it's very easy. That's a one person solution right there for nine million taking out the cap space. That's that's one individual. Uh, but offense, ninety eight million is being spent. Defense, ninety million, and we don't know who they're going to resign. You know, they got. Aaron Jones is a free agent now, and um, they may get someone in the market. They may get someone in the draft, fill certain positions. Uh, I think, again, I mentioned Chris Carter. Um, he may be a good fit to go there for a little bit cheaper pricing. Um, but, again, they are going to have to really discuss some um, contract extensions. Um, I know they did Aaron Rodgers, uh, Devontae Adams. Zadarius Smith, uh, but they should be in a good position to make just those small adjustments to get where they're trying to get, right? All right, minus seven million again, another team that's an easy fix for, and clearly they are in the catbird seat to make the decisions anyway. Uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers are spending 129 million on offense, 54 million on defense, okay? Um, they did franchise tag Chris Godwin, uh, for, so that cost them fifteen point eight million, and re-signed Levante David, which I mentioned last uh, episode for a two-year extension. Okay, uh, those will count three point five million against the cap in twenty twenty-one. So not terrible. That was good moves. All right, that puts the Bucks at seven point seven five six million over the cap, based off what they have with um, the team already. And they just got to, again, make the right decisions for in order to move people around. You have uh, certain contracts that are, you know, affecting it with 14.25 million with Donovan Smith, 10 million Ryan Jensen. Uh, JPP is taking up 12.8 million a year. So uh, I think it'll be easy because you have people like Tom Brady and Rob Gronkowski who don't really care about the money if you ask me they're wanting to win they're wanting to play for fun so that's why you never heard of tom brady get this new big contract like we did hear him resign right we heard about him resigning to uh play with tampa and things of that nature but it wasn't like oh he's now getting paid more than mahomes and stuff like that no because they they are focused on what happens on the field okay kansas city chiefs uh have a minus two million again super easy fix uh, offense 105 spent, uh, defense 96 million spent, um, and as I reported earlier, they did have to make some big moves. They were the first ones, possibly in the news, immediately after the um, salary cap was released for this year. After they released those ta- release tackles, uh, Mitchell Schwartz and Eric Fisher, big parts of their um, offense, but that saved them 18 million. Okay. I took $18 million off of that to help them in the situation. And I guess that was a tough decision, but it was the right decision because if not, then it'll be minus 20 overall um, in that cap space. So who we, who knows what they're going to do to, <laughs> you know, block for the guy that likes to move around and make crazy plays because you're definitely going to need some fast and strong linemen. All right, now getting back in the green, uh, we have the New York Giants that's going to have – about four million, four point three million of cap space available. Uh, again, these are all projections, like I said, based off of what they have, based off what the new cap is. So, what kind of breathing room we're looking at? Uh, offense spent is eighty one million, defense eighty seven, and uh, clearly, 
the Giants are on the move to possibly get maybe some defensive key players um, to compete in their division. They were very close this year. Uh, and will Washington come out the same way they did? Possibly not. I'm pretty sure their biggest contender is going to be the Cowboys next year. Um, but New York is going to um, do what they need to do to get there. So we'll see. Detroit Lions, again, another $4 million over cap. $85 million spent on offense, $76 spent on defense. Um, they just made the move to get rid of Matthew Matthew Stafford. Uh, they got Jerry Goff now. Um, I'm pretty sure, based off what they got, including the um, draft picks, that this is what they wanted. This is the, what they're going to do to move forward in the organization, turn it around, make it more of a staple instead of just a – Thanksgiving team <laughs> just a team you just have to see on Thanksgiving but don't do nothing with it so the Buffalo Bills 5 million over 65 on offense 110 on defense they are apparently restructuring some contracts um, to in order to make it all work so that they can still get what they're going to need to be able to beat Kansas City in the AFC championship <laughs> next year Um, Just some key players, I'm sure, on defense. Uh, Their offense is pretty solid, I think. And and no one should be getting uh, sent to the free agency market, which is great. Um, They for sure have offensive linemen John uh, Feliciano and Daryl Williams are uh, possibly going to get re-signed. So they'll keep that strong line that will be uh, up there protecting. Steelers, 5.5 million over, which is great. I mean, they got Ben back, who they did restructure his deal. Um, uh, uh, you know, once well over the, they, they used to be well over the salary cap because Ben had a league high 41.2 million hit on it. But, like, they, you know, that pretty much meant they didn't have a choice but to restructure it. <laughs> uh, but the team and uh, Ben agreed to a one year. A deal that voids after the 2021 season and lowered the cap hit by 15 million. So save them plenty. Um, you also had retirements of Pouncey and McDonald uh, to help restructure some of those veterans' pockets. Moving on to Minnesota. In Minnesota, they have a 9.1 cap space over overage. Um, 75 million spent on offense. 87 million spent on defense. Uh, they got you know under the cap by you know releasing Kyle Rudolph, uh, one of their Pro Bowl and tight ends gone. Kicker Dan Bailey, a Pro Bowl kicker, and a left tackle Riley Reef, uh, and they're restructuring some contracts for you know other teammates to help. You know that we'll probably hear more of that this week. Um, they definitely have room for you know to get free agents, and they have some great. Draft capital, so I think you know Minnesota Vikings still get it done, still have the right pieces in order to compete. We'll see. Um, one that I like is Arizona Cardinals with 15.1 million uh, overall cap space. Um, they have 81 million on, spent on offense, 82 spent on defense. Um, they're in a good place uh, thanks to JJ not breaking their salary cap. And uh, the cornerback Robert Alford and his $7.5 million in cap space. Um, this is enough for, you know, two big names to for them to sign, uh, possibly get some good help over there along with a good draft pick and possibly be in the running for contending for the championship next year, um, which I think we're all expecting to see already anyway. Baltimore Ravens, another positive one uh, because we know they need to grab some people. They have 17.6 uh, overall cap space, uh, 61.5 mil spent on the offense, 90.7 mil spent on the defense, okay? And uh, they're in talks with trying to figure out what they're going to do for Lamar Jackson. You know, um, it was said that even though Dak got paid what he did, that wasn't going to affect what happens with Lamar. We're all expecting that Lamar is supposed to be next up, though, which, again, isn't anything that's going to sh- that should trip out and – damage their cap space coming up uh, in this 21 season it might be you know detrimental in the future but as of right now they can definitely make it happen for Lamar 
Uh, of course, they do not have Mark Ingram anymore. He was gone at the end of the season. He is now with the Texans, so that's someone they don't have to worry about paying. But right now, they have allocated seven million of cash space uh, to their wide receivers, which ranks the seventh smallest in the NFL. So they definitely have to. Add someone there that, you know, been mentioned multiple times that Lamar Jackson needs some weapons, okay? So we're going to see. We're going to see. You know, you need more than the Mark Andrews getting his big money extension, and he hasn't, he can't do it by himself. So between Mark Andrews and Hollywood Brown, they're definitely going to need at least one more key player. Las Vegas Raiders have a $17.7 million uh, cap space, overall cap space. Spending ninety-seven million on offense, sixty-seven million on the defense. The Raiders, um, they'll probably be able to add another fourteen million uh, once they get Trent Brown to the Patriots, which that's been in talks. Um, that's going to happen, I'm pretty sure, in the next week, if not less. Um, they're getting getting them up to you know three point, I mean thirty-three point seven million or more. You know they they possibly have quarterbacks like uh, Marcus Mariota have. You know, some re-signing for the cap, uh, do some restructuring and things like that in order to get them where they want to be. Um, you know, key players that went into um, free agency that they could possibly be re-signing. You know, uh, Nelson Aguilar, hopefully it's someone that they can, you know, re-sign and come to an agreement that isn't going to hurt their pockets too much because he was a very... Very much so a key player in this past season for them. You know, a good season for the Raiders. Uh, another team that's come a long way in the past few years. Uh, next, Dallas Cowboys. Um, they have $18.5 million of overall cap space. Um, the offense spent is 133 No surprise there. Defense, $63 million. Okay. Um, of course, you know Dak Prescott. <laughs> he's um, he definitely came down a lot on his effect on the cap. You know uh, he account for twenty two point two million versus the thirty seven it was going to be thirty five point seven or thirty seven point five one to two. Uh, but the team restructured contracts for Zach Martin, Tyron Smith, and Liel Collins, which created roughly seventeen million in room, which was great. Uh, not only are those you know, linemen that Dak need those, you know, money on the cap that they're going to need to be able to pay other players that they have. You know, we all know that Dallas Cowboys, a team that looked really good on paper. So now they just got to transition that over to the field. The Tennessee Titans uh, have a projected overall cap space of 20 million, 20.5 million, spending 102 point. Four on offense, fifty million on defense. Very low on the defensive end. I think that's something that's going to have to change. They averaged thirty point seven points per game, which was fourth in the NFL. Uh, they're amongst the NFL leaders in you know most cap mo- uh, money invested in their offense. So clearly, like I said, they 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 lean heavy on the offense. Um, this will also increase once they resign or if they resign Corey Davis and Jono Smith. Um, this I mean they got the money so cool I just hope they balance it out a little better so that they can compete um, you definitely need to make sure that your defensive players feel appreciated alright Seahawks have a 20.6 million dollar projected overall cap space okay offense has getting spent on for 84.5 million Defense sixty five point nine, almost sixty six million, um, and they released Carlos Dunlap. That was that is what freed them up for fourteen point one million, but also created a hole in the roster as he was a key player. Um, they have a need for a couple different things. Like I said, Chris, Chris Carson isn't there anymore. Uh, definitely gonna need a running back. Beast mode isn't there. That's really what you're talking about. Uh, but no, Chris Carson was a good piece there. Uh, they also need, you know, some defensive linemen, offensive linemen. Um, you know, you hear Russ complain about getting hit. So I think that's where they're probably going to go first. Look for some great offensive linemen to fill in. And from there, then they might get uh, defensive linemen, cornerbacks. 
Houston Texans, um, mayhem over there, as we all know. Um, we don't know what they got going on. You know, releasing J.J. Watt, uh, Nick Martin, Duke Johnson, and restructuring David Johnson's contract has, you know, given them an $18 million cap space for 2021. Uh, that's what they're sitting at with, you know, luckily to have that, spending 90 on offense, 69 on defense. Um, but they got a lot of work to do. They got a lot of issues, a lot of things going on in the back. Uh, I think not only is it going to be hard signing players just because, like, it's going to be hard signing them for the amount of money that they possibly want because, you know, of everything that's going on. That that That's part of the distraction. That's part of the problem. And, uh, I mean, if my thing is if, you, if I don't already want to go there, you're going to definitely have to pay me to go there. So... They're going to struggle a little bit with that. We'll, we'll see what they do. Uh, in San Francisco, they have a 24.6 um, cap space, spending 87 on offense, 76 on defense. Um, someone that I guess I would really honestly wouldn't have to worry too much about overall. Um, but like the, these individuals right here in the middle, these teams, so. San Francisco, Cleveland with 25, uh, 25.4 overall space. Los Angeles, 25.6. Los Angeles Chargers, sorry. Uh, Carolina Panthers, 29.8. And the Dolphins with 30. As you see, it's just increasing uh, comfortably for teams that clearly you're going to need it more we're starting to hear more of those teams that have been in the struggle to get over that hump so they're going to be able to be flexible with it um and then you know like teams like denver and washington and cincinnati that are even higher in the 70s uh i mean i'm sorry in the 40s for 30 late the high 30s early 40s in millions in projected overall cap uh, and they have great draft capital, okay? They have the right positions to make it happen. Now, getting to the top three teams, I want to just, you know, discuss the top three teams with the most amount of projected cap space. Uh, number three being the Indianapolis Colts, okay? This is a team that we know is <laughs> always right there. Okay, they're always right there. And being in AFC South uh, with teams like the Texans and the Jaguars, I, I think they definitely have the opportunity to make it happen, to get where they're trying to go here. Uh, they have a cap space of $63.6 million, spending 63 on the offense, 59 on defense. Um, they just got Carson Wentz. Uh, so, you know, there's that, and there's restructure some things. Um, but the, the, they're, they're in the right position, okay? Uh, number two is the New York Jets, which, like I said, the Jets need this. They need to be able they they could literally get whoever they want with 70.3 million cap space, okay? Spending 76 on offense, 43 on defense. They can go out there and pretty much do whatever they want. Um, many teams are struggling to reduce their cap, but you have people like the Jets who are thriving uh, along with draft capital. Um, they have the ability to acquire whoever that they need in any position, which I hope we just haven't heard anything yet because they're really planning this out thoroughly. I'm um, assuming that they're going to go and keep continue rolling with Sam Darnold since they will not begin Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> Uh, so they'll need just a super big pick after that, you know, someone that's going to change, uh, the dynamics of their locker room, honestly. So that means a superstar veteran. And I think they're going to need a superstar rookie coming in. And cause I mean, they're, they're the mark, they're in the right market. They're in New York for goodness sakes. Uh, so you've been in New York. That's cool. But now it's time to perform uh, me honestly, with everything they have coming into this year, this 2021 season, uh, draft capital, things of that nature, I definitely see them being projected to uh, increase their success within the next two seasons. 
Okay, and what I mean by increase is they're gonna go move away from this whole team that almost lost every single game, almost went 0 and 16, and I think they may possibly turn themselves into the playoff team, at least a wild card. Uh, mark my words, just wait and see. Now, number one team with the most cap space is the Jacksonville Jaguars, 74.4 million, 64 spent on offense, 62 spent on defense, so still very low in you know having it what they need. Uh, they have the most salary cap available, uh, as expected, and they have the you know great opportunity to be the number one overall pick, getting Trevor Lawrence. All right. Uh, and, and you know, with with this, you know, they possibly aren't gonna go get any big names as far as you know, uh, skill players in free agency. Uh, but according to the uh, GM, uh, he did say we've looked, we're, we're looking for value. Uh, he said this isn't the most expensive player. He like, yeah, that isn't the most expensive player. So you know, that's his way of saying that they want people that can get the done it get it done and turn things around for them not necessarily like oh you're such and such so you know here you go because also such and such because of what they've done in the past probably gonna cost you a good little penny all right but the good thing is like i said they got it (laughs) they got that and they got the first spot locked in in the draft so that they can you know start this thing off with trevor lawrence you know coming down there to the Jacksonville area, playing in the AFC South, which, hey, if you ask me, it, that that might be that might be a great place for him. I I think he, based off what's going on in Houston right now, he might have the opportunity to take over that division. And yes, I know, no, I mean, no, I did not forget about Tennessee Titans. I think Tennessee Titans are great, but I think what they have going is only going to last about two more years. Honestly, give him two more years. Derrick can refire and everything like that. Everybody's going to have that the match made for them. Uh, but AFC South, depending on what Deshaun Jack, I mean Deshaun Jackson, Jesus Christ, uh, Deshaun Watson <laughs> decides to do Carson Wentz in Indianapolis, Trevor Lawrence, Jacksonville, Tannehill and squad in Tennessee. Uh, if not this year. It really should be this year. I think that division might be really competitive. It's going to be a tough one um, to win. Uh, Again, like I said, guys, this cap space, this is important because this all depends on who they can pay, who they can't pay, things of that nature. Uh, So that makes things more competitive. You know, you lose some players that, you you know, you don't plan on losing because of it, especially when you don't know what the cap space is going to be until it's time. But – that's what it's looking like. Time for a quick little break. When we come back, we'll discuss what I believe to be a transfer of dynasties. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. Hey! The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play.
back. Thank you for your patience and uh, listening to those fine commercials and the music. You're back with DJ Youngs on the GSMC Football Podcast. In this segment, I will be discussing what I feel to be a possible shift in dynasty power. All right. Um, you know, big news came out this week uh, for both teams, both New England and the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, I have my theories or my thoughts of what we're looking at. But uh, you can definitely come up with your own on what you think. Um, I definitely want to start in New England first. In New England, Cam Newton is in the process of signing for another year. Um, this is cool news, I guess. I, I guess everyone had the idea that we could possibly be seeing, you know, the Patriots go for someone else. You know, it was clear that they were moving on. I think there was even worse. I've seen uh, after the season, you know, Belichick and Cam both saying, you know, about talking about going separate ways. But I guess in the process it changed. Now, there was, you know, last month uh, a podcast that came out with Cam Newton mentioning that, you know, he didn't mind going back to work to play for the Patriots. But what I think honestly happened was, I mean, them hearing that he had the option or the interest in returning as well as I think they had another plan that probably wasn't going to work. So on the last episode, you heard me mention uh, something possibly happened with Jimmy G. Um, Not really that there were true facts on it. It just seemed like their best bet. And if not that, then, you know, trading up in the draft to get a new guy or just getting somebody out the another free agent. But Cam, I mean, if you're going to go for that, then I guess that does mean Cam Newton will be your answer being that he just was there learning. Uh, He had, you know, an interesting year with you guys and it was a bit of a hiccup. I mean, he didn't have... Much help, but j- just his deadline alone, um, he had about um, 242 completions on 368 attempts, which is a completion of 65.8. He did it for over 2,600 yards. Uh, he had eight touchdowns, 10 interceptions with a 82.9 passer rating. So, I mean, it's not looking good. His QBR was 47. This was at the bottom of the quarterbacks starting. Uh, of course, those eight touchdowns bottom. Uh, 10 interceptions right in the middle. That's the, you know, the norm. Not good, but the norm. So, it's not like he had a fantastic year. But the Patriots didn't have a fantastic year in general. So, I mean, again, uh, this is a team sport. We can't put it all on camera, even though these are the leaders. You know, you want them to be the ones that can make something happen and do a turnaround. But let's talk about real quick. You know, I I want people to understand because it might seem like I'm a little bit of a cam enthusiast, but it's not, you know, it's just me knowing what someone's capable of. So just to uh, give you like reference, I always felt some type of way about LeBron James and his game because he was always so hesitant. He, I mean, don't get me wrong. Yes. Team sport, you know, pass the ball, be a good guy, be a good leader. But when you're having a crunch time, when things are tight and we know what you can do, we need you to do that, you know, get out there and make it happen. All right. Now, Cam's had injuries and illnesses. Like, again, even this past year, 2020, he did unfortunately catch coronavirus during the season. And he said that kind of uh, was a little hiccup in him learning as the um, offense just, uh, was growing. But, I mean, let's go back to 2015. I mean, we, clearly we can't dwell in the past because it's more of what have you done for me lately. We're talking about athletes, especially football. Uh, you, you, are, you could be one person one year and then following the next year be completely different. I, I get it. But... Just in 2015, so we can compare this, what happened this year, and compare this, what just happened six years ago. 2015 wasn't that long ago. So, in 2015, when he was the MVP, took Carolina to a 15-1 record to the Super Bowl, had a 58, I mean 59.8, almost 60% passer rating for 3,837 yards, 35 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, which is what he had this year, right? Like it didn't. He had so many rushing touchdowns. Like he, which he also showed up to do in New England this year. Half his touchdowns were rushing touchdowns, which is what got you know him just the touchdowns he got. Uh, but he he has been injured, and that did put a little hiccup in his career in Carolina, right? But now here in New England, a very straightforward, militant type of organization. That if you really sit down and do what you need to do. Anybody could be a star. I mean, let's let's talk about how the jokes are always made for the past years when Tom Brady was there that they had all of these receivers. 
that no one's ever heard of, but Tom Brady can go to the Super Bowl with him. Okay, cool. Tom Brady could do that. All right, whatever. Everybody ain't Tom Brady. I'm not even going to sit here and act like Cam Newton is Tom Brady. Uh, give Tom Brady his flowers, too. He does make some miracles happen. I got it. But Cam needs help. All right? Look, they, the last year they didn't do really anything. His number one receiver was Julian Edelman. That was his number one receiver. Yes, Julian Edelman is a MVP, uh, Super Bowl MVP receiver, but like he isn't someone that's going to really change the game. And if that's your number one receiver, it's very easy to take him out of the game. Back when um, Brady was there, I mean, he had p- other people on the field with him. He had Grunk, you know. He had White that he could throw it to coming out the backfield, things of the nature. Uh, Cam doesn't have those luxuries. Okay, look, like the next person after Julian Edelman is Jacoby Myers. And, I mean, again, I'm, these people, these individuals are in the NFL. So, I never want to take away and be like, I, you'll never hear me say this person suck or anything like that. Or uh, this is a bad, you know, player as far as just in general. Like, this, this guy's terrible at what he do. No, I'm not even going to clown anybody like that. I'm going to just say that certain people work certain way together with the certain people around them as well as in a certain type of environment and that's what we need for cam they need to go out they need to go pick up some of the free agents out there receivers you know that i think could make things happen uh it, it they got the salary space right so i believe they have the third most space in the league right now first cap no fourth Fourth, so they have projected overall cap space of fifty six million. All right, so that gives them a reason to be aggressive in his offseason, which I, I'm sure they are. The, the The Patriots are smart. We know that they're gonna go out there, and what they're really good at doing are, is um, not spending, like getting what they can for the money that's affordable for them, and making it work as far as them, the individuals being uh, brought into this fundamental situation that helps. Them just be like, hey, if you do your job, then we're going to win. Because I think that's what they're good at. Everybody understands if you do your job, you win. Or, you know, hey, we need you to also take it seriously. Uh, no one's allowed to be late to meetings. You know, you're supposed to come here. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to do your homework. And everybody do that. Um, something I always took pride in, I mean, because I was good at it. But I always know that I want to transition that over when I've done mentoring situations and uh, talks to little kids is that like the way you could be the best player in any sport is not just athletics you know not just being the person that can run the fastest jump the highest but also be the smartest one on the field know what's going on know what you're looking at if you're on offense know what the defense has going on if you're on the offense know what everybody else's job is that is lined up with you you know so that you can you know understand the field movements things of that nature and the New England Patriots do that. I think they teach their players very well, which is why, you know, when you have somebody as great as a Tom Brady, it, it looks like you guys are unstoppable. Uh, can they get there with Cam Newton? This is the question, because that's what we're talking about here. The news is that they want Cam back, I believe, because what they probably originally wanted didn't work out. But, again, we all know I got hope in Cam. So, can it happen? Yes. I think if they get, honestly – one catch ready uh running back so uh a running back with some good hands yeah, that'll come out the backfield uh i don't know chris carson if he's available that's a decent pick uh but you get one of those and get him one more receiver matter of fact maybe even get him a tight end if they can move up in the draft and get kyle pitts that'd be great uh things of that nature kyle pitts is projected i think he's you know honestly top receiver in the draft uh don't get me wrong i'm a more of a Devonte smith fan as far as just the receiver position but if we want to talk about somebody that you want to go out there and get it want it to be like aggressive i think kyle pitts is the man that's a, a strong young man that'll get it done uh but the patriots they, they do got to definitely turn it around um they finished third in their division last year uh missed the playoffs they went seven and nine it, that that's not gonna make it happen. They're in a very competitive AFC East. Uh, Buffalo it, been dominating the last couple of years and only going to get better or dominate some more. And they have to prepare for that. Miami's on the growth with Tua lining up people around him about to, about to go in the draft, I'm sure, and get some more guys to uh, help him. Uh, it's even said that it could possibly be um, Devontae or you know somebody from the Alabama Forte to help you know keep that chemistry. Uh, New York Jets. Uh, I don't 
think they should be a threat, but you got to keep in mind that they do have a high draft pick, and they got they they have the second most cap space, so they can definitely move a lot of things and a lot of people around. But I think part of the problem with the Jets is just the back room, the back office has had its own issues for quite some time. So that's something they're gonna have to work on. Uh, but yeah, um, he he played in some games, and it honestly was you know. Some good and some bad, like you know, some hit or some miss. You know, he they did win forty five to zero versus uh, the Chargers. You know, that's a good win. That that's a, that's a fair win. But then they did lose to Buffalo thirty eight to nine. So that's a really bad loss. Um, and I remember when they lost the worst they did at home against San Francisco. You know, it, it is a different environment. It's a different place, and I think they need to realize that if they haven't already. Uh, I don't know too much of what's going back there. I'm not going to speak like people on TV who, who you know, seem to either be in the office with these people or pretend that they are. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you what, what's reported, what's out, what the thought is versus what we've seen. And, I mean, that's what we see is that the Patriots, they're going to get it done. Cam is capable of getting it done. So we just need to wait and see if the same guy – who was in the Carolina Panthers, uh, breaking records for them, throwing over 31,000 uh, yards for 190 touchdowns with 118 interceptions, rushed for over 5,000 uh, yards, 70 touchdowns rushed. Uh, that guy, he exists. He's in there. I think it's focused. Uh, Cam's not in the news for anything bad lately, didn't seem distracted, anything of that nature. So what all we have now is, especially with him, signing this early right now is he had now officially has around five plus months depending on uh the preseason is going to be any different this year to get it right to study it up to practice it up with this organization who once they decide that this is the man they're going with, with like i said they're in the process of signing that one year deal they're going to give it all they're going to put our all their time into them they're going to focus on him. They're going to help him with anything he may be struggling with to, you know, get it done because they are used to winning. And once you are used to that culture, then you know a little bit more on how to do it than individuals that aren't used to it. Teams that aren't used there, uh, used to going there, um, you know, unfortunately, like the Texans and the Jets, teams that are, they need a lot of work and need to bring in the right individuals to create that atmosphere. But I guess we will see. We'll see what they uh, decide to do there. Okay? That's that on that situation. But to get into the topic a little bit deeper as far as the dynasty ending, I believe that it was obvious once Brady left that was the case. I'm not going to lie. Me, myself, may have had a little bit hope, a little bit of hope in Belichick um, in the eyes of him probably getting Jimmy G back over there and maybe getting some things to happen again because, I mean, Jimmy isn't no Tom, but uh, I have faith in Bill for, you know, Jimmy being the guy he was trying to get rid of Tom to use anyway that maybe there was something there that maybe I don't know. So uh, that one, though, you know, being that they – that's ended. That's gone. There's will never be another Tom Brady. Not in New England. Um, Cam again, great guy, but that that's not going to any longer be a dynasty like it was. That's the end of that era. Now getting into Kansas City territory, we are talking about the former Super Bowl champions, uh, league MVP and Pat Mahomes. Uh, Super Bowl MVP. Now, they're stacked. And, of course, they made the moves that they did releasing uh, Fisher and Swartz, uh, unfortunately, to make the room so that they can stay elite and give it another shot. They're not making these moves to hurt themselves. You got to remember that. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure they didn't want to let go of those guys, but they were injured. So, with the possibility of them losing their two best, don't think that they won't go out there and do what they need to do to get someone new, someone more powerful, possibly better than those two guys. Uh, a couple guys, they may even have to get a whole new line, which the negative side of that would be that there would be a new set of, you know, I guess, chemistry 
that would have to be created between all of them um, cohesively along with Patrick Mahomes to make sure that they operate well. And, you know, the running back in Clyde Edwards-Hilaire, who had a decent season. Um, you know, they also have Levon, uh, Le'Veon Bell and Damian Williams on their depth chart. So between those guys all, you know, making the run game happen and protecting Patrick Mahomes, if they get new guys, especially through the draft, there will be new fresh bodies, younger bodies to go the long distance, which means that they can work together longer. You already have Patrick Mahomes locked in for, shoot, longer than anybody that have ever been locked in, I feel like, 12 years plus maybe, uh, based off that extension. Um and from there, you just got to make everything else happen. You know, are you going to franchise tag Sammy Watkins? Keep him. I think McCole Hardman has been an elite receiver, punt returner, and only going to get better. I, t- he jumps off the screen for me because he's, I feel like he's lightning fast, moving around. Of course, he's going to have to have his payday. Um, when it comes down to Travis Kelsey, Tariq Hill, um, I can't really speak. Again, I don't know these people personally. I always said I'm not going to try to get on here and speak as if these individuals sit in my living room and tell me what they're thinking. I'm just going off of my eye test, what I see, what I hear, how they, you know, speak at conferences, uh, things of that nature. And I mean, I feel like both of those guys, Kelsey and Hill are unselfish. I believe that they will, you know, when the time comes make needed adjustments in order to run, you know, for these championships uh when it comes to pockets and stuff i'm pretty sure they could still be paid appropriately um but the 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 dynamic that they have with patrick mahomes i'm sure that they don't want to go anywhere else and miss out on um they know that even without them that is a team that has a great chance of still making things happen still being successful um so they 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 will it would be interesting to watch, but I mean, again, we know Kansas City is dynamic on offense, and that's what that looks like. But you also got to go look at what they've been doing on defense and the moves they made. You know, even when they even went to go get Tyron Matthew, like that was a great move for that team, and he's been nothing but successful there. You know, um, they did have the little hiccups they had, um, what that he had in the Super Bowl, but outside of that, it's been the right guy for them. Um, I know that. There may or may not be some more talks in um, what's going to happen with Snead. All these guys, Frank Clark, um, Chris Jones, dynamic players for them on defense that will definitely give them a chance. People that they even have coming off the bench. Um, you know, a free safety they have, Armani Watts out of Texas A&M. He was the top-ranked uh, player when he came in, when he went to his draft a couple years ago. Uh, they still have people they could develop that way and put out there and make a big splash. He's out there on the field sometimes. You, you'll see him. You know what I'm talking about. I still have Taco Charlton, uh, who I believe is a little banged up right now. But he's somebody that's young. is isn't somebody else that they can develop. Juan Thornhill, young, able to develop many years to come uh, that they can make something happen long run. Uh the game, I feel like, is definitely shifting away from... I mean, everybody still wants to get paid. Don't get me wrong. That that That's the case. That's still going to happen. But I believe that everyone is understanding how to be unselfish. Who? Where is the blueprint coming from? Tom Brady. He's been doing it for years. All the quarterbacks have seen that, you know, he's someone that is selfless. Sacrifice his own pockets to make sure his team sticks together, which is why they... The Patriots for so long had the opportunity to have these teams that had players that were able to make big plays and have big names. But at the same time, they made use of the ones that people were less familiar with that were good athletes, but they, you know, just didn't have the same opportunity as everybody else or put in the same position. Patriots put those individuals in that position. If Julian Edelman was anywhere else, I do not think we would know who Julian, Julian Edelman is. That's just the honest truth. But, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not that they haven't made big moves. We definitely know for a fact, you know, that you can't ignore when they had Randy Moss. Probably one of the greatest runs in football history is when they went undefeated, but unfortunately lost in that Super Bowl. Uh, Randy Moss racked up stupid yards along with Tom Brady just breaking those crazy records. So, I think that they understand that circumstance and they are going to make those same decisions. They are going to make those same moves. Um, 
that that that's what they that's the way that I believe the game is going. That's the obvious reasons why, clearly, and they have the opportunity to do it. I like the team myself. They're not my favorite team. I don't have one, of course. So, again, this isn't me coming off of how I feel on them personally. It's literally just my honest feelings as of watching it. If you've been watching them, you see them. We watch what they did all season as a team. You know, they they weren't doing nothing that was just unbelievable as far as going undefeated like the Patriots did that year. But they went 14-2. and two. That's still great. People complained about them not covering their uh, spreads during the season. Th- that's fine, but they win when it, they won when it mattered. Okay, I think everybody still. And if we, if you were to pull up any of those statistic charts, have uh, chances of winning the game as the game go along versus in the Super Bowl, I'm pretty sure it's a little different than usual because everybody, even though that. Kansas City was getting whooped on. We knew, you know, what they were capable of. And so even coming out of halftime, it was like, oh, well, we're about to see what's going to happen. That's what kept it interesting. If this was anybody else, I think the Super Bowl would have been a tragic game all the way through, like, as far as entertainment-wise, because it would have been like, oh, there's nothing to watch for. But even with them being down so much going into the half, I still had hope. I still was very much so interested in the game. And that's because they got the power to make it happen. And moving forward, I'm thinking everybody's happy. We don't hear too much drama going on in the background, uh, any problems. So, with that being said, yes, I think this dynasty is looking at a fine future. Uh, I'm calling it a dynasty early. Yes, I know. But it's because it has that potential. Kansas City, you know, been on and off for years just in general before Patrick Mahomes became their starting quarterback. But now they got it right. It's a great organization. It's hard to beat them at home. Everybody knows that as well. Uh, going into uh, their stadium, it, it's like a vortex. All right? Especially when the fans get back in there. When, you know, states already open all the way back up. I'm pretty sure the league's going to slowly make that transition. 2021 season, that we haven't got the official numbers on what they're going to be doing as far as that. But, hey, they went. To won the Super Bowl. The year they lost Super Bowl, they only lost two games. And next year, don't be surprised if you see them go undefeated. Okay? Even with the new O-linemen, don't be surprised. They are on their way, and we will be hearing a lot from them for sure for their next 10 years while they have Patrick Money Goat Mahomes. All right? So, now we didn't talk about this dynasty transfer. Uh, I started off the show, of course, with the new news. We went into the salary cap. Uh, we're going to take a break and then go into the last segment where I'll be discussing some bold predictions on what I think will all happen next year. I just gave you a little snippet saying how I think Kansas City is going to do what they're going to do. But you'll hear a lot from me coming up next. So stay tuned. This is your ultimate stop for everything sports. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Should I say more? From the NFL, MLB, the NBA, to MMA. It's all in here. The Golden State Media Concepts Sports Podcast. Listen now. once again and i hope you enjoyed that music and those commercials um it is time for me to have a little fun okay this is where i get to just say some things without consequences not planned um i just wanted to give my personal kind of predictions going off of last season on going into next season a few things that i believe could possibly happen 
Of course, don't quote me on it. I'm not going to come back here and be like some shows where I have this uh, set in stone and you will hear from me come Subo time like this was the team I picked, this team I wasn't picked. No, I'm going based off of March 2021, how I'm feeling, and it will definitely change, I'm sure, before the season starts because, like I mentioned earlier, we have some things going on right now. They have, you know, teams have a couple more days before they have to be compliant with some things so it is what it is but um we saw we had a great show so far gave you the news um we heard about cam going with the patriots we heard about uh patrick mahomes uh restructuring some things so that they can hopefully keep some people they're paying most of their guys already they had to release top uh linemen we heard that aaron uh, Aaron Jones going back to Green Bay to play with the former MVP Aaron Rodgers. Still heard nothing about Deshaun Watson. So what could possibly happen next season? I already told you in the last segment that I believe Kansas City will go undefeated. And with that being said, of course that means I believe that they will win the Super Bowl. I don't think they're going to blow it like uh, the Patriots they are going to become the team to do it they are going to go all the way not be defeated and I'm not even saying this as in like Kansas City is a team that cannot be defeated they're just unstoppable it's more of they live they learn they've had their year of success they have the year of uh, failure in the Super Bowl they know what they need to do I think they're going to come in with they're focused all the way through. They're not going to underestimate a team like Las Vegas again. That That's not going to happen. They Las Vegas got the better of them, and that's just not going to happen. Um, they are going to be prepared to play these teams. They are going to be prepared to see the Bills again, uh, who I think is another favorite, um, to go. All right? Now, with that being said, I just want to kind of fall into who I believe will win each division. All right, and go from there. So I just gave away two, clearly. <laughs> like, I literally just said AFC West champion is going to be Kansas City Chiefs, obviously. If they're going to be undefeated, <laughs> that's them. That means they defeated everybody in the division twice. All right. Um, also, AFC East is going to the Buffalo Bills. I do not think the Patriots are going to make an immediate turnaround. I think they will definitely have a better year. And I believe the division is going to be more competitive as the Dolphins improve their roster uh, and add some extra weapons. But as far as anyone dethroning the Buffalo Bills as the AFC East champions, I do not see it happening within one year. Okay? Uh, and not to disrespect the New York Jets, but um, I don't know where they're going to be. Um, but they won't be winning that division okay now moving on to another afc division fc north all right i'm giving this one to the cleveland browns all right yes i believe that even though ben's coming back he hated that how they fell off um and how they lost in the end after having such a impressive season i don't think it's gonna happen again i mentioned that um, and Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, I love him. I love watching him play. I love just everything about that team, how you know resilient they are. But I think they're going to stop at number two again. I think they'll have them a you know a good wild card battle though. But the Cleveland Browns have been on the up and up. They had a great season, and I mean great for them. I mean no disrespect, but you know. I'm not going with the expectations of talking about Kansas City. If Kansas City won 11 and 5, it would have been a disappointing season. But for the Cleveland Browns, 11 and 5, very impressive. Cincinnati Bengals, Joe Burrow, I hope he comes back healthy, absolutely, but they will more than likely not be in the playoffs again next year. All right. Now, one of my exciting divisions, the last AFC division, AFC South. It's a hard one to pick right now. But again, this is just for fun. So, I will definitely go with the Tennessee Titans winning again. <laughs> uh, it's just going to definitely be more competitive. Indianapolis Colts have always been a good organization. We're making things happen. They've always been in the fight 
for years when they had Peyton. Clearly, they were dominant. Uh, after Peyton left, they had Andrew, and they were still pretty dominant. Um, Texans have been trying to fight for it for years. They won once, I believe, like in the last decade that division. But other than that, it hasn't been it hasn't been there. Jacksonville had their shortcomings, um, and just that that blew that. And you know, last year they went one and fifteen. It did. You can just see how fast things turn around, which I want to also give credit to the, you know, the cap. Like I mentioned before uh, on the last episode, that that cap makes things more competitive. Uh, you know, you have to move people around because you can't afford to pay everybody. That's one reason. Then, two, of course, you have your, you know, people having to be trader, people making scenes not wanting to be there anymore, which they have also had to deal with. OK, but. Tennessee Titans still keeping everybody as far as their uh, strong uh, offensive do, uh, pair. So you got Henry, you got Tannehill. Um, I believe that it was a pretty good season, good year also for Brown. Um, yeah, he, he had a, a great season uh, showing out this year. Uh, Corey Davis, I believe, is someone that they'll re-sign. And get somewhere on there, uh, as well as uh, Joe New Smith. Uh, we don't have the answers. I mentioned that uh, earlier. I mentioned him earlier, but they should be able to keep that and make some big happen, especially in the draft. Make some big draft pickups. Um, don't be surprised if you see them get you know another offensive weapon in that draft. I wouldn't be uh, probably a good receiver uh, or upgrade the line. Things like that are definitely possible, and that would be a great team to watch. Uh, that's who win that division. So, with that being said, you know, uh, they all go into the playoffs, but clearly uh, Kansas City will be on their way to the Super Bowl. So, they will be representing the AFC and the Super Bowl, according to me, who knows everything. Moving on to the National Football Conference, NFC. Uh, and we're going to just start off at the bottom, NFC East. <laughs> Uh, this one is hard. I mean, it's the teams that are just struggling to get things together. But this upcoming year, you know, who knows what could happen? This is any like this. This division literally can go to anybody next year because you got Washington come back there. Just won the division this past season. Uh, definitely going to possibly be making some new quarterback moves. Um, they'll have. You know, they, the defense did well this season. I'm pretty sure they'll just be upgrading that. New York Giants, uh, Saquon should be coming back. So they'll have a healthy Saquon to keep them in the running. They had their chance to almost make it as well into uh, the playoffs this past year. Didn't. But the Cowboys. The Cowboys are just always, we just don't know. You just don't know what you're going to get out of them. I had a friend said the only thing he's confident in is that they will not be going eight and eight and that's because there's the nfl is planning to have an extra games there will be 17 regular season games this upcoming season and um but on paper they look amazing they just re-signed Dak. they got amari they got cd they re-signed the offensive lineman zach martin they got some dynamic o-line they got defensive players that i believe they need to still add to um, you know, um, Woozy, I haven't heard much about it, but he's possibly going to be a free agent because I think they are going to be getting uh, the number one cornerback out of Alabama in certain, certain, sorry. And, you know, they'll, he'll add he'll add to the, that defense, I'm sure. He'll come in there, and they'll have a chance. I think they do. I give them top two chance. I, don't, I just don't know who to say number one out of them. And Philly, because... Philly is slowly making some moves. Actually, no, I take that back. I will say Dallas. I can't say Dallas. I think Dak is coming back with a vengeance. That's why. Dak's coming back, and Dak's going to put on the show. He's going to show why he was worth that money, and he's going to produce for the NFC East. He's going to produce for the Dallas Cowboys. He's going to win more than one playoff game. You heard it here. Dallas Cowboys will be winning more than one playoff game. Yes. Uh, but Philly's still going to be exciting to watch. Mainly because of Hurts. I want to see him do well, but eh, maybe a wild card. It's going to be a fight to the finish. Dallas on top. 
NFC North. This is the one that's easy, another easy pick because I think it's going to be a repeat. All right. What we saw this past season, I believe, is almost equivalent exactly um, what's going to happen next year. I see that Aaron Rodgers back with Aaron, them putting uh, Aaron Jones, and them putting on the Aaron show. I believe that is going to happen once again. Will it be another MVP season for him? Hmm. I don't know. It could. I think he's going to have to fight Dak Prescott for it, though. That's why I think he's going to have to fight for that that right there. Um, but Chicago, Minnesota, and Detroit are not making anything splash right now. They're not doing anything, I believe, to move the needle. Um, so that will put them in the same situation. Okay. NFC South, New Orleans Saints. Again, mentioned earlier, Drew Brees called the retirement. Sorry to see him go. Um, but I don't think it's going to be the biggest, like, take back for New Orleans. Like, I don't think they're just going to, like, drop to the bottom because they just lost one of the best quarterbacks in this generation. I think that they'll still be in a fight, but they'll be, you know, still behind, trailing behind Tampa Bay. I believe Tampa Bay is still going to be a reckon, reckoning force, only getting better. Uh, with confidence, uh, knowing that everybody's coming for them, they're going. They're not going to let their guard up. I mean, guard down. They're going to keep it up to keep fighting and protect themselves. And they will not be swept by the. They will not be swept by the New Orleans Saints next year. It actually might go complete the opposite way, and the Buccaneers might sweep the Saints. All right, Carolina don't like they're getting Deshaun Watson, um, and. And, you know, we want the best. I, I see McCaffrey getting healthy, and hopefully he'll be back in order to make them a contender. But they will not be the winners of the NFC South, in my opinion. Atlanta Falcons will be the Atlanta Falcons unless they make the biggest decision that will change their organization in the draft. And that will be getting whoever will be the rookie of the year. That's what they will need. If they get the quarterback, whichever one is available... Um, that that that's what they would have to do. He, that person, that player, that rookie would have to go off. He would have to set a couple rookie records and just be unstoppable. But again, you can't do it by yourself. So he's gonna definitely need the assistance from uh, you know his help. You know his Julio Jones and uh, people. So we will see though. Um, that's just my prediction. NFC West. Seattle Seahawks, Russell Wilson will miss the playoffs. That's my prediction. Believe they will miss the playoffs next year. Um, I hate to see it because I like Russ. I like seeing what they're doing over there. But I think the Arizona Cardinals are going to win this division. I mean, I think they, I think they're going to do some some crazy stuff next year. Like they're gonna be a team to watch. Like besides watching Patrick Mahomes do all his acrobatics with his throws and uh getting some crazy touchdowns, you're gonna to want to watch Kyler Murray, the former rookie of the year. You are going to want to see him go out there, throw it to D hop, make some amazing plays. Whoever they get in the draft, it's gonna be somebody else he can add to it which could possibly be a great receiver and someone that he, you know, may have been excited to get or see you know maybe a waddle maybe i personally would love to see that but i mean you hear about other people you know chris and um chris chris uh jamar and everybody um but san francisco uh, even with everybody coming back healthy i do not believe will be up there but i can see the los angeles rams still being a contender they have a great coaching staff uh they made a move again like i said i don't know why but they paid a lot of money for matthew stafford so that definitely means they are leaning into what he can do for their organization they are counting on him and of course everybody else around him They'll be able to get up there. They just went. They literally just went ten to six with Jared Goff. So, I mean, I don't think Matthew Stafford would do worse. <laughs> Only better, if anything. Uh, but those are my predictions as far as you know the the conferences. But like I said, I, I did pick Kansas City all the way, 
So, my bold pick to see who is going all the way will be Green Bay. I think Green Bay, I think Aaron Rodgers is going to take him back there uh, for the fight. Uh, he did, unfortunately, lose to go to it versus um, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. But I think next year he'll sit them down. I think they will be dethroned. Tom Brady tweeted out, you know, once he re-signed this extension that he's heading for his eighth. But, hey, maybe that eighth will come in season 22, 22 when you're the oldest <laughs> NFL starter in history and then could possibly be the oldest person to ever win the Super Bowl or at least in that position. But we will see. And that is my bold prediction for the conferences for the Super Bowl matchup. And now I will officially decide who will be the rookie of the year. Now, it's definitely going to come down to where everybody actually lands. But if you haven't noticed, there is someone I have in mind that out of two teams that he could possibly go to, I think become the rookie of the year. And this is aside from, you know, a a rookie quarterback being put in a great position, a, um, a, a Lawrence and going off in Jaguar, one of them division. I don't think that'll happen, but I mean, of course, if it does, then I can't fight that. But I want to say rookie of year is not going to a quarterback next year. I want to say it's going to a receiver. That receiver being Jalen Waddle. Okay, uh, this guy I can see, and I'm saying that because I can see him either getting picked up by Miami, going to the Dolphins, or even Arizona and going to the Cardinals, and him playing with Tua or Murray. Like, man, can you imagine the plays we'll see? Uh, especially if he's on the Cardinals, being us on us, you know, opposite side of D High Boy. He's more of like a slot receiver, but the kid's fast. He's so fast. Moves around. Great route runner. Great hands. Catch ball in traffic. Um, and with D High being number one, the number one receiver, then clearly he'll have some lighter weight on his end. And be able to make all the plays. And Kyler will be able to find them. And they'll both be, you know, keeping the defense honest. Because we know Kyler likes to run. So, it isn't like those linebackers are going to be able to keep up with Waddle. Or keep up with Kyler. And keep their eyes on both. They will go crisscross-eyed for real. Okay? And then, on the opposite side, if he was to play in Miami, you know, they're getting other pieces. I don't, if they, if they were to get him, they're not just going to even have him in two. They're just, they're definitely going to invest in some other pieces out there. All right. Don't be surprised if in the next week you see them sign a superstar running back or make a trade, a huge trade for a running back. Okay. That's just how I see it. MVP, like I said, can go a couple different ways. Could Aaron go back to back? Could it be someone that's not a quarterback? Or will it be Dakota Prescott coming back from a severe injury that we all hate to see after fighting for his life to get the deal he deserved? It finally all happened. And you know what? This is his time. This is the time that you silence all the haters. This is the time that I believe the... I believe that, you know, you Dallas fans, y'all can finally, you know, say it with your chest. Say it with your chest. Y'all can finally say that y'all are going to go far this year. That y'all are going to make some big splashes this year. Do it. Do it. You know why? Because it's the opportunity is there. It looked good last year. Y'all still were struggling a little bit. But, hey, guess what you got to do? You got to learn from all of that. You got to see what wasn't really working. Even when y'all had Dak still on the field, what was going wrong? Y'all were up there putting up big numbers because Dak was fighting for his life to win these games. So you got to sit there. Organization organization should have been very invested this offseason into figuring out what went wrong. Okay? People that need to come out of there need to come out. People that need to step up need to step up. Jalen Smith. And... Even on the coaching staff, same same ordeal. They got a new defensive coordinator. Uh, we'll see what that is about, you know. See what uh, Quinn will do for you guys. Uh, but I think Dakota, I, th- I think he's going to make it happen, man. 
Y'all, y'all should be very, very excited. All right. Now, don't be surprised if all of this doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and act like I am the number one analyst. I'm not. But based off what we've seen in prior years, based off what we've seen in this very unprecedented 2020 season, everything was so different now, you know, then and everything is going to be so different now moving forward that you kind of got to take everything lightly that you saw this season. I know people want to take people down because they're like, oh, they this is how they produced. But you got to remember, man, the, the whole league was different. Everything was different. People had to sit out. Uh, people got in trouble for, you know, disobeying some of the rules to keep people safe. So they had to be gone. People opted out. So people didn't even have their top players, top key players in certain positions. It's a number of things. But that is some bold predictions for you for the position of the Super Bowl, the MVP, the Rookie of the Year. All right. Now, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll definitely be making more crazy predictions in the future. You know, I will just because that's a way more fun than just reporting news and things of that nature. But, you know, this was still a great episode. I uh, was some great news that came about that I'll help report to you guys. Uh, we moved from there. I talked about the salary cap room per team, uh, what they were looking like moving forward. Um, the transfer of the power of the dynasty between the Patriots and and the now Kansas City Chiefs, who are going to be great for a long time. And then my early league predictions, bold statements, things of that nature that I just gave to you. I hope you all enjoyed. I enjoyed my time. I'm looking forward to see what happens in the next few days. Uh, definitely come back. Check in with me so you can learn more about what those things are happening. I know people are busy right now. I know you guys are. So keep up with me and the rest of the football podcast. Thank you for listening. This is the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. Uh, I would definitely like to ask. Uh, don't forget to, to subscribe to us. You know, leave comments. We definitely appreciate that. Write nice reviews. Uh, anything of that nature. Also, please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. GSMC underscore football. Thank you. Good night. Good morning. Good evening, everybody. Talk to you guys later. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program